There is a power loose in the earth, ancient and forever new. No one may resist. It is the very ray which gives discovery. No one will stop or manipulate it. The ray of discovery will change your world. Hello again, and thank you for tuning in. In our continuing series of telecasts, we will chronicle some of the most astounding discoveries made in our time. You and I together will rediscover technology, which has been suppressed by desperate financiers. Look now to your viewing screens as we unfold this drama together. Dr. Raymond Reif is one of our century's greatest pathologists. But you will not find his name on the registry unless you delve deeply back in the 1930s. In this biographic essay, you will learn of the fourfold discovery of Dr. Reif and learn the true nature of a disease which authorities have termed elusive and unconquerable. You will also learn why it is that Dr. Reif's research, along with the others who researched similar lines of reasoning, has been ridiculed, ostracized, and eradicated from the public eye. You will also be informed of the subtle manipulative tactics of certain persons who were employed by the controllers, whose specific function it was to seek out, study, and remove any and all cures which threatened the pharmaceutical castles which have reigned for so long supreme in the world of medicine. To be sure, Dr. Reif was one of the most illustrious researchers and designers of America's medical world. His discoveries opened new doors in therapies, and his was the proof that cures for disease might be had in non-pharmaceutical agents. During the course of the video documents herein to be presented, we challenge the specialists in the audience to dare all the mind restrictions which have been imposed by the association upon you. We urge you to obtain these materials and instruments and prove for yourselves their validity. We caution you that such actions may invoke the wrath of the association, coupled strongly as it is with the financial dynasty surrounding your art. We also urge you to seriously resist the typical brief researches and subsequently fixed proclamations which the association has become famous for in debunking through the most shabby of scientifically hasty moves any and all such claims of alternative theoretics and alternative cures. The field of pathology rests entirely upon the ability of the researcher to isolate and examine microorganisms. Thus, it is the microscope which provides the avenue for knowledge in pathology. Stronger resolutions was the goal of many designers and theoreticians at the turn of the century. Optical designers would be led to develop greater microscopic resolutions in numerous leaps until a seeming limital barrier was reached by methods then employed. The various interrelated factors responsible for limiting the resolving power of an optical microscope design were formularized by Abbe and others. According to these inertial principles stated, an object which is smaller than half the wavelength of light being used in illuminating that object cannot be seen in true form and detail. When various novel designs for optical microscopes became challengers of these inertial laws and barriers, several reactions were manifested by certain financial empires. 
The optical microscope of Dr. Francis Lucas, then working with Bell Laboratories, developed resolutions of 30,000 diameters and magnifications of 60,000 diameters using ultraviolet waves. If you should examine the journals of the Mayo Clinic, 13 July 1932, you will discover that an even more powerful embodiment of these optical microscopes was successfully validated. This validation was confirmed by Dr. Edward Rossenau of the Mayo Foundation, and it was the specific work and designs of Dr. Raymond Reif working with Dr. Arthur Kendale of the Department of Bacteriology, Northwestern University Medical School. Resolutions in this design gave 31,000 diameters with magnifications exceeding 61,000 diameters. And here begins our story. You may find a truly elegant discussion of these excellent microscopes in the February 1944 journal of the Franklin Institute, in which Dr. Reif's marvelous designs were analyzed. The Smithsonian Institute published similar detailed articles which discussed these designs of Dr. Reif in 1944. These came after 10 years of the most startling medical developments made in America, and you will not find them listed or mentioned in any text, however academic. The why of this will become apparent, and anger should be the natural reaction, not mockery. These microscopes of Dr. Reif made it possible for the researcher to examine microorganisms of the smallest variety. These included viruses which could be seen stained by their own color emanations. Dr. Rossenau of the Mayo Clinic stated that viruses could not be seen under ordinary microscopes owing to their non-staining glassy or transparent hyaline structure. Dr. Rossenau stated that the results obtained with the Reif prismatic microscope was due to this unique light frequency staining technique. Dr. Rossenau stated also, quote, examination under the Reif virus microscope of specimens leaves no doubt of the accurate visualization of viruses by direct observation. Close quote. 16 May 1942, a group of doctors examine the Reif prismatic microscope and find the same rule when used in observing virus structures. Dr. Renner, Santa Barbara. Dr. Schmidt, San Francisco. Dr. Slade of Almeida. Doctors Larkin of Bellingham, Washington. And Dr. Gier of San Diego all made agreed responses concerning the promise of such a powerful tool and the future use of pathology research laboratories around the world. Dr. Raymond Reif's main concern at this time was the utilization of his powerful new prismatic microscopes in identifying and studying virus structures of all varieties. To this end, he began along with Dr. Arthur Kendale, a series of preparations and investigations in viral research. This involved establishing a catalog of reference for all subsequent study. Having such means at their disposal, the two researchers together began to prepare over 20,000 slides over a period of 15 years. The filtration techniques, which utilized porcelain filters, were being made to yield surprising results when Dr. Reif began examining carcinoma and sarcoma tissues. Several strange discoveries were then made. Cancer viruses could not be stained 
by any other method than those described previously, which used light frequencies emanated by the viruses for direct observation in the rife prismatic microscope. When carcinoma tissues were exposed to the emanations of rare gas tubes, such as argon, it was then that the tissue samples began releasing viruses into the cultures. These were seen in the rife prismatic microscope to possess a purplish-red color emanation, characteristic of all such cancer viruses found by the team. In addition, these forms were very animated and had a diameter of less than 1 20th of a micron unit. Every human sarcoma and carcinoma samples, which were filtered and incubated in these modes, all released the same virtually invisible virus. Reif and Kendall were able to observe these forms in vivo as well. Their technique did not involve the killing and plating of the materials in order to make observations. These were direct observations of a truly elegant nature. In these cataloging researches, Dr. Reif made two great discoveries. Added to his great discovery of the prismatic magnification principle, he identified a singular virus in all human cancer conditions. And he determined the modes of incubation and the behavior of these same viruses. In a brilliant series of demonstrations, Dr. Reif proved beyond all doubt the transmissibility of these viruses from initial cultures. Each test proved that a singular virus of purplish-red coloration was responsible for all, we repeat, all cancer conditions in humans. This is far from what we have been trained to believe. When specialists are portrayed as desperately searching for the cause of cancer, they infer that there are so many such causes that a cure is not even in view. This futility has maintained the pharmaceutical industry for decades with billions of death dollars in their treasuries. The techniques are medieval at best and lack any precision of verdict. When we are made to miss the mark early on in our quest by the greedy, then we are made to wander in the desert for decades, wondering at our plight. The answer is simple. Dr. Reif, in 1932, did find the causal microorganism in every human cancerous condition. For this, he was made to endure years more of suffering and breaking at the behest of the controller behind the scenes. While we infer this criminal's family name, we do possess the name of the individual who was used in the process of eradication. So, Dr. Reif and Dr. Kendale proved the filterable nature of the cancer virus. This great discovery was followed by years of research into the exact mode of transfer and incubation of this virus. The use of the color frequency staining technique became invaluable in this quest. By this method, it was possible to make preliminary diagnoses of many infections, including cancer, by color observation in blood samples. The first cancer virus photomicrograph was made in 1952 in Dr. Reif's California laboratories with Mr. John Crane, who has long since championed and advanced Dr. Reif's initial work. Mr. Crane is both an excellent designer, machinist, and researcher, and we thank him for the numerous contacts and conferences we have had with him over the years. He is the only link we have with Dr. Reif today.
with the determination of cancer virus incubation modes came another step, which was Dr. Reif's fourth great contribution. While using color frequencies refracted from the viruses to identify them, and using argon gas emanations to incubate these viruses, Dr. Reif had a sublime thought concerning resonance and the role it might be playing in the growth of these viruses. Remember, Dr. Reif was not looking for any of these discoveries. His was the prepared mind at work. He was not therefore biased in any way whatsoever. The reasoning that resonance might be a means of destroying microorganisms came to him in a flash. Developing demonstrable proofs of such a theory was yet another hurdle to overcome. Preliminary experiments utilized a sonic transducer aimed into a live viral culture mounted in the prismatic microscope. Adjusting the frequency while making careful observation of the viral conditions was easy. What was difficult was the maintaining of a penetrating enough resonant condition into the slide. This sonic technique worked very well for large microorganisms such as bacilli and various protozoa of all kinds. But viral cultures remained resilient to all such sonic attack. In solution, it is the crystalline shape of pharmaceuticals which creates resonant shattering of target microorganisms. The danger of ingested pharmaceuticals, either through oral or injected means, relies heavily upon the relative allergic or poisonous potentials versus the target efficiency. Ingesting penicillin will destroy certain microorganisms while creating seriously depressive reactions within the rest of the host organism. This was the great challenge during the years when antibiotics were being sought out. While very ordinary chemicals could kill germs, their effects upon host cells were hideous. The present use of radioactive bombardment involves resonant shatterings, but of a very crude and violent nature. It was Dr. Reif's concern to develop safe means of saturating an infected body with the right pulses of energy in order to cause resonant shattering of the infecting microorganisms while sparing the cellular integrity of the host. It was within these years of research that Dr. Reif made a wonderful find to which the word serendipity must perfectly apply. Dr. Reif realized that a device whose power to select such vibrations in order to effect resonant shattering could replace every material substance administered in the cure of diseases. His cure wave therapy was to open new worlds to all humanity. Both the intensity of AM radio and its penetrability through very large structures seemed a logical course of study to Dr. Reif. Now the frequencies employed in AM radio are far too low for any resonant shatterings to occur. But by impressing a gigahertz pulse upon this carrier wave, an effective means of shattering a series of microorganisms might be had. In this method, it was electrocution which was to kill the infecting bodies, not simply acoustic pressure. These radio pulses could harmlessly pass through the host body and shatter all the disease-causing organisms. But how would this affect delicate cells of the body, such as the neurons of the brain, 
and the blood cells? The answer to this came with divinely applied serendipity. Dr. Reif discovered to his amazement that every cell within the human body was some 10,000 times more resilient to radio resonant bombardment than any of the species of microorganisms which have plagued our world. With such a tool, it might be possible to saturate an infected person with the proper resonant frequencies to affect a sterilization of the infectious condition. The only negative effect upon the host body thereafter would be the sudden release of dangerous toxins into the person's bloodstream. When the emanations of Dr. Reif's ray tube are to this day applied to an infected person's body, such is the case that a mild depression follows the application of the rays. This is eradicated by having the person ingest suitable electrolytic solutions, which are used to carry off the toxins quickly. Dr. Reif used a helium ray tube arc to direct the energies, using the pulses of a diathermy machine to modulate an AM transmitter. With the ability to vary the frequency selectively, Dr. Reif successfully demonstrated the safe resonant shattering of disease microorganisms, including all viruses. He compiled lethal frequency values for all the known disease-causing organisms. He also discovered, quite accidentally, a yet more beautiful effect when killing viruses and other agents with his ray tube. These effects were measurable up to eight miles away from the lab, regardless of position or enclosure of the cultures. To secure his own test cultures for further research, Dr. Reif had to build special multi-wall aluminum vaults in order to shield out the cure waves. What this inferred was broadcast inoculations for the public health, free of charge. This opened the doors of possibility too far for certain competitors to accept. The possibility that Reif's microscope might overturn the electron microscope market, newly developed and returning millions, was all too evident. The Rockefeller-backed industry of RCA and Bell Labs was to be the status quo. No little research man from the West Coast was going to be their competitor. Reif had never entertained any thoughts of making fortunes. His was the altruism of the good physician, to alleviate world suffering and to cure his patients. I swear by Apollo Physician that with purity and with holiness, I will pass my life and practice my art. Into whatever houses I enter, I will go to them for the benefit of the sick and will abstain from every voluntary act of mischief and corruption. The unethical practice of certain few in pivotal places represents nothing new in the world of monarchic greed. But in America, this is as foreign as the disease which we will eradicate. What Dr. Reif's findings indicated was the possibility of public health on such a huge scale as to match, in the medical arts, the very findings of Nikola Tesla in free energy. Neither of these could be tolerated. The horror of free energy and Free medicine was as inconsistent with the monarchic dynasty's plans for unlimited wealth and control as you may well imagine. It is with such in mind that the fate of czars may be best appreciated. While it was to be much later in Europe that such devices were developed, Dr. Reif in America was to be another man destroyed. 
Antoine Priore in France during the 60s developed certain plasma tube generators which seemed to be effective in eradicating certain infections, including cancer. Shown here, Dr. Priore's plasma tube arcs were huge and, may we say, somewhat unpredictable. These plasma devices of Priore had a bad habit of exploding occasionally. His dream was to effect total body saturation. The French government was backing Dr. Priori's work until one tube too many exploded. Another researcher in America was George Lachowski, who developed this multi-wave oscillator device based on assumptions of Dr. Nikola Tesla. George Lachowski constructed this device. It was designed to release waves of a wide variety in order to affect sterilization of wounds. Dr. Thomas Henry Moray had also constructed certain types of plasma tubes shown here. In various articles, Dr. Moray described electrotherapy. Certain persons we have heard from have been exposed to certain of the remaining tubes of Dr. Moray, and their report is that upon such exposure to the rays emanating from these tubes, such strength and vitality seem to linger for days that it is hard to imagine. The efficacy of these ray tube devices was reported by several medical doctors. Dr. R. E. Seidel wrote the following words, quote, under the microscope of rife, disease organisms such as tuberculosis, cancer, sarcoma, streptococcus, staphylococcus, typhoid, and many others may be observed to succumb when exposed to certain lethal frequencies peculiar to each individual organism and directed upon them by rays covering a wide range." Close quote. The rife cancer cure was also reported in the journal in volume 237, number two of the Franklin Institute. Throughout the years of his illustrious life, Dr. Raymond Reif enjoyed both the support, company, and following of large numbers of the medical community. At the hands of Morris Fishbein, the then ruling and subversive secretary of the AMA, Dr. Reif was slandered and maligned, accused and threatened, and finally overruled by government law acting at the behest of the association. Wherever there is a monument yet to be placed for greatness, compassion, and triumph over human suffering, let one name on that monument read for Dr. Raymond Reif, pioneer and discoverer of cancer therapy, whose own suffering at the hands of the greedy and the powerful will not be reckoned vain. The ray of discovery is touching many different places today. It is arcing widely and rapidly in its blazing path. These paths are never isolated to one region or nation. The fierceness of the greedy will never succeed in quenching its power. The ray of discovery will continue to change your world. Watch for it.
The following video document is real film footage taken in 1939. What you will now see is Dr. R. Raymond Reif in and around his research installation in Southern California. This video document is the direct result of several valuable persons whose dedication and devotion to scientific truth must not pass without mention. We wish first to thank Mr. John Crane, who was Dr. Reif's assistant, and through whom the 16 millimeter film was obtained. Being executor of the Reif estate and the sole personal link we have with Dr. Reif himself. The second person we must thank is Thomas Brown of the Borderland Sciences Research Foundation, whose kind and patient endeavor has rewarded many seekers of the deeper mysteries of natural science. We wish also to thank Mr. Duncan Laurie for his assistance in the production of the film into video format and in obtaining the film from Mr. Crane for these purposes. What you are about to see is the very portrait of the independent researcher. You will see Dr. Reif and his marvelous ray tube devices in operation. You will also be stirred into some basic questions and possibly some well-aimed indignation. Our greatest desire is for you, the viewers, to obtain more information on every such item. And for those of you who are inventively inclined to attempt reproductions of these effects by similar means. This is the Rife Research Laboratory, and this is Dr. Raymond Rife. Glancing around the interior of his independent laboratory, one realizes the completeness of this installation. The numerous chemical laboratory rooms. Order and precision are spoken of highly everywhere in these pictures. The culturing room. The sterilization facilities. this complete machine shop. These all attest to Dr. Reif's serious intent. Within these machine shops, several microscopes were fabricated. The office study of Dr. Raymond Reif reveals the intense humanity of this great man and his fullness of personality, which rewarded all his associates throughout his life.
within the vaults of this office were held samples of radium for research purposes and other important documents. This operating room was where Dr. Reif performed surgery upon subject animals. These were performed in his series of conclusive evidences of his viral cancer theory. By successive inoculations of rats exposed to a BX viral strain, which was extracted from human tumor samples, Dr. Reif was able to show in a series of cycles how that these viruses were the sole causative agents in every human cancer case. In this optical laboratory, we see these microscopes. These were the marvelous tools by which viruses could be seen in the living state. The various optical benches, the universal prismatic microscope, and a large million volt x-ray machine all affirm the totality of Dr. Reif's many avenues of research. Here were apparatus by which to photograph viral preparations. In addition, movie pictures could be made. The twinkling otherworldly quality of these prismatic microscopes bespeak of mysteries beyond. It was by these marvelous microscopes that Dr. Raymond Reif separated a singular viral strain associated with every form of cancer in humans. Here we see Dr. Reif preparing a viral filtration from a tumorous mass obtained in a local hospital. A slice of this tumorous material is removed. It is then crushed with a mortar and pestle, washed with triple distilled water, and filtered. Dr. Reif was assisted by many esteemed medical doctors and enjoyed the willing support of hundreds of these individuals. His laboratory technique is flawless. Here he filters the crushed cellular mass through the unglazed porcelain filter. The filtrate is then stored in test tubes 
which he then irradiates for 24 hours each under argon discharge lamp light. The light frequencies within these emissions caused the viral forms to become very active. This stop frame progression is representative of an elapsed 24 hour period under the argon labs, making a total of 240 laboratory hours. The viral cultures in these test tubes was extremely active. For preliminary proofs and controlled experiments, Dr. Reif maintained several thousand animals used in the experiments. These were kept in the cellar rooms and tended by over five personnel. There were well over 1,000 albino rats. The entire laboratory was kept spotlessly cleaned and sterilized and a staff of 12 workers with various serious technical abilities were Dr. Reif's immediate aides. In this series, a partially anesthetized albino rat is being inoculated with the filtrate obtained previously. The incubated virulent culture would then produce the tumor seed. Dr. Reif then performed the necessary surgery to remove the resultant tumor and to heal the rat. Exposure to the ray and emissions within that ray would complete the sterilization process. No new tumors were ever seen again after such exposure. These tumorous materials were then utilized in further such experiments. Dr. Reif needed to secure these materials within triple wall aluminum vaults. This was necessary because the cure waves emitted by the ray tube device would broadcast their power to eradicate all virulent germ forms up to eight miles from the laboratory. This was proven in a series of tests. We are now observing a BX virus slide preparation. Again, the mass is palpated, washed, and filtered through unglazed porcelain. We wish to advise that neither Dr. Reif nor any of his assistants died of cancer.
Dr. Reif's designs were and remain the only microscopes in the world in which viruses may be directly seen while in the living state. The prepared filtrate is placed upon the slide. Dr. Reif will utilize the universal microscope. The machinery behind Dr. Reif is the ray tube device itself, and the ray tube is clearly seen above the good doctor's head. This next marvelous sequence is the first public viewing of these tiny bodies, the BX virus strain. And these are the cause of humanity's greatest physical ailment. They are motile, streamlined, shaped particles capable of high-speed travel through liquids. Dr. Reif will now activate the ray tube for a brief flash. The 500 watt transmitter would broadcast this effect for eight miles around. We call your attention to his adjustments upon the device. Here he is determining the lethal resonant frequency of these viruses. The light flashes in the tube. The viruses are now detoxified. They are dead. Death by electrocution. We see now the dead viruses agglutinating after the cure wave pulse has passed through the room and the region. The machine is here shown. And frequency analyses had been recorded, produced by this oscillator. Dr. Reif was in possession of a catalog of lethal resonant frequencies. These indicated the energetic frequencies necessary to shatter germ forms of various kinds into the lifeless toxins. It was the spiked edges of these pulses which possessed the key to shattering the pathogens through resonant peaks. His later device utilized an audio wave impressed upon a powerful diathermy wave. The harmonics were then varied by suitable controls. Dr. Reif later found that square waves were found to be the most appropriate ones for these lethal actions. The wave energies were capable of destroying germ forms but incapable of harming all surrounding human tissues, which were some 10,000 times stronger than all pathogens.
This Abrams oscillator was an early spike wave generator, whose pulses are here shown, and which was used in the early 1900s for treating cancer and other diseases. These current pulses were made to pass through the body of a patient directly. This method is being currently utilized by John Crane in his new frequency therapy machines. A very great variety of active frequencies can be observed in these oscilloscope tracings. The output of the Abrams oscilloclast was wild and uncontrollable as here seen. Yet in numerous instances, these devices were absolutely effective in eradicating and sterilizing wounds of every bacterial form. This seemingly forgotten chapter in medical science has been totally overrun and overtaken by the material pharmaceutical agencies. Imagine a single machine capable of sterilizing wounds, of sterilizing all body infections. What would this do to the pharmaceutical houses? Mr. John Crane is here shown in his San Diego laboratory. He has continued to do research work from 1950 until the present and has developed the Rife prismatic microscope along further lines of excellence. Dr. Reif had not only Mr. Crane on his staff, but also other equally excellent persons, working in various capacities as technical machinists and laboratory pathologists. In our presentation, we shall see some last glimpses of the virus microscopes of Dr. Raymond Reif. These which we see are by no means the end. Mr. Crane is in possession of them all and welcomes all serious contacts. Mr. Crane has reactivated the Rife Ray Tube machines and, to our knowledge, has been active in treating persons afflicted with various maladies with these devices. These activities, of course, do not take place within the borders of our nations. And persons interested must contact Mr. Crane. What you are here seeing is the electrode of the helium ray tube in operation. The machine before you energizes the plasma arc within the bulb. This is the radiative body and is the source of the cure wave pulse itself. These several models reveal the means of eradicating all diseases via radio wave blasts rather than liquid or material inoculations. What they represent is the complete removal of the pharmaceutical industry. Imagine to have discovered a cure for diseases, 
sublime, elegant, and masterful, only to find violence pressing in on every side. Dr. Reif passed away in 1972, yet his legend bespeaks much to us of the wondrous. The compassionate Dr. Reif was used to cure 16 hopeless cancer patients with his devices. The criminal element which suppressed these discoveries must be dealt with directly and research must be conducted independently Let the legend of Dr. Reif inspire, enrage, and empower you to action. We believe that you will continue to join us in our adventure of the continuing saga of the Ray of Discovery. <laughs>